Hello, friends. Um, let me take this opportunity to welcome you once again to our Bible study. And remember, this is uh, the uh, fourth episode. Though it's for this reason, I would uh, uh, request you to uh, turn with me in your Bibles uh, to Colossians chapter 1 from verse 15 to verse 20. And um, we will continue, of course, our study of uh, this great book of uh, uh, Colossians. Uh, let's go immediately to the Word of God and, and we read Colossians chapter 1, uh, verse uh, 15 to verse 20. He is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of all creation. For by him all things were created in heaven and on earth, visible and invisible, whether thrones or dominions or rulers or authorities, all things were created through him and for him. And he is before all things, and in him all things uh, hold together. And he is the head of the body, the church. He is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, that in everything he might be preeminent. For in him all the fullness of God was pleased to dwell, and through him to reconcile to himself all things, whether on earth or in heaven, making peace by the blood of his cross. Let's look to God in prayer and ask him to help us and bless us as we study his word. Heavenly Father, we thank you so much um, for granting us this opportunity to continue uh, studying your word. Lord, we ask you that um, you help us understand your word and apply its truth uh, into our lives. And uh, may you bless us as we study your word. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Friends, I hope some of you are new to our Bible study group and uh, you are very welcome. Let me begin by reminding you of my names so that as a family of God, we all continue together in this journey of studying his word. My name is uh, Dengue Desire and I'm glad you're joining our, our study. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, as... Um, I have said, uh, you remember in the, uh, you know, past, you know, studies, we actually uh, we started talking about, you know, uh, the kind of uh, false teaching that was in, uh, in, in Colossae uh, that, you know, actually questioned whether Christ is uh, sufficient. And remember in our studies, we say that, you know, uh, that the Apostle Paul responded to that uh, particular uh, uh, teaching and, and, and actually he started he responded to that you know uh, from the very very moment uh, he opened his word of uh, greeting to the Colossians and um, you know in his very greeting of course he undercuts uh, that you know particular false teaching and then in verses 3 uh, through 8 uh, he offers up a prayer, a prayer of uh, thanksgiving for what God is doing in the lives of the Colossians. And uh, this, of course, again, and undercuts the idea that uh, <clears throat> there is, uh, there is uh, something else other than Christ that, you know, these uh, Colossian believers uh, um, need, uh, you know, uh, that, uh, that is outside of Christ, okay? Uh, because Christ is everything that we need. Christ is everything that, that everything that they needed. So there was no need to, you know, um, to seek for something else that is, you know, outside of Christ for their, for their fullness. Uh, all right. And actually, remember that uh, in this uh, book we say that you know the major theme is that uh, we believers are complete in Christ. We are complete in Christ and. Uh, you know, all the resources that we need to grow in grace, all the resources to, we needed to, you know, live a godly life, uh, they are all found uh, in uh, Christ uh, Jesus. <clears throat> and then uh, uh, you remember last time we talked about, you know, the, uh, we were in, you know, verses uh, um, uh, uh, particularly 9 to 
to 14, verses 9 to, uh, to 14. And what did we see in uh, those particular verses? We saw Paul, you know, continue to pray specific, you know, things for these uh, Colossians uh, to know and experience as part of the, uh, the, the, uh, their belief in Christ. We are not going to speak of them into detail because we've already learned about you know, them last time. It's just a reminder that I'm doing. Um, in this passage now we've read today, Paul is specifically talking about you know, the preeminence of Christ, all the supremacy of, um, of Christ. You know, he, he, when we look at this particular passage, Paul praises the Lord, you know, uh, the Lordship of Christ in relation to creation and, uh, and, and redemption, right? And uh, uh, in our study today, I want us to look to uh, four phrases in verse, you know, in these verses. I mean, verse 15 through uh, 20. And, and let's go ahead and uh, look at those, you know, four truths one at a, at a time. We will begin, you know, from verses, you know, uh, 15 and 17. The first phrase uh, that I want us, you know, to uh, look at in these uh, uh, three verses is that, you know, Christ is Lord of creation. Christ is Lord of uh, creation. Look at Paul's words in these verses, verse 15 to 17, okay? Uh, he is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of all creation. For by him all things were created, in heaven and on earth, visible and invisible, whether thrones or dominions or rulers or authorities, all things were created through him and for him. And he is before all things, and in him all things hold, you know, uh, together. Christ, ladies and gentlemen, is, um, Christ, you know, is, uh, is the Lord of, uh, Lord of creation. And what, what is, you know, Paul talking about here? He is actually stressing that you know Jesus, you know, uh, Christ is 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 very God. He is God. That is what he's talking about. Look at what he says. He says he is the image of the invisible God and the firstborn of all creation. See, and this phrase Paul is stressing that Jesus is very God. He is God Almighty. He's not something less, you know, than God. All right. He's not the highest of uh, of, of of created beings. He not. Uh, he is not, you know. Uh, simply a great man. He's not a philosopher. He's not, you know, a, a great moral teacher. He's not a, a, a prophet. No. Paul, what, what Paul is actually saying in this passage is that, you know, um, Jesus Christ is, you know, very, very, very God. He is, you know, the almighty God. Okay, look at what he says. He is the image of the invisible God. See, in other words, he is the visible manifestation, the visible manifestation of, um, of, 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 of God. See, you know, when you remember, actually we'll come to it when we come to chapter two of this uh, great letter of Paul. And uh, particularly in verse, you know, chapter two, verse nine, you know, Paul, you know, says that in Christ, all the fullness of uh, the deity dwells in bodily form. Right. And, and see, he is, he is the visible manifestation of, of God Almighty. See, that is what actually Paul is emphasizing, ladies and gentlemen. He wants us to understand that Christ, Christ is very God, is God, you know, uh, himself. Right? Um, you look at this, you know, he is, you know, uh, you, you, you are very aware of that, that he is the second person of the Trinity, the eternal God in the flesh. You know, today there are many, uh, uh, probably you may have heard of them and you may be aware of them, that there are certain, you know, uh, denominations uh, of uh, Christian churches that belong, that, you know, uh, they, they actually believe that Christ is God, I mean, is, is, is a good teacher, is a prophet, is a good man. But they deny that you know Christ is, is is God, and that is that is heretical. That is you know terrible. Eh? But Paul is you know wants us to understand that you know Christ is God. You see, uh, let me tell you this, ladies and gentlemen. Um, if if Jesus is not divine, 
we, we are then undone. We are undone. If he is not, you know, God, we are, we are undone, I'm telling you. Because if he's not divine, he cannot release us, you know, from the powers of darkness. If he's not, you know, divine, he cannot free us, you know, from sin. If, he not, if he's not, you know, divine, he can, he can neither, you know, bring us into the glorious light of, of, of God. And so, understand that, you know, it is terrible not to believe that, you know, Jesus Christ is God. Okay? Because if he's not God, then... He cannot save us. He cannot, you know, redeem us. He cannot, you know. And it is very important for us, you know, to understand that concept. It's very, very important for us to understand that truth that, you know, Christ Jesus is God himself. Paul is talking about of Christ who is 100% God and uh, 100% you know man. So there is a, you know, uh, something here I want to make, you know, uh, clear that um, he, he talks about, you know, uh, uh, Christ as the firstborn of all creation. Now, wh what does he mean? You know, some people think about that and they will say, ah, then you mean that Christ was created. But ladies and gentlemen, this is what, you know, Paul is saying. You know, Paul is not saying that, uh, uh, he's not saying that, you know, Jesus, uh, you know, had a physical origin or, or, or somehow, you know, created. No, that is not what he's saying, you know. As I said earlier, that Christ existed eternally, you know, as the Son, you know, with the Father and the Holy Spirit in the, uh, in the Godhead. What actually Paul is saying here is that um, it, something that he had in mind was, was, was the rights and the privileges of a first, you know, born son, especially the son of a monarch or the son of, of, of a king, you know, who would inherit, you know, uh, the ruling sovereignty. And this actually, did you know that, you know, this same expression was used of, uh, of, of, of David, uh, particularly in Psalms, uh, verse, uh, uh, chapter 89, uh, verse 27. Uh, you know, uh, speaking of David, this is what, you know, God says. God says, I will make him, right, uh, the firstborn, the highest of uh, the kings, God, as they watch you because you know we mirror God Jesus did not only create all things but all things were created for him they existed to display his glory and that is the question I was asking you did you know that you know the reason for our existence it is not to do what we just want to do no we exist to display the glory of God and that's what, what, what Paul would say in 1 Corinthians chapter 10 verse 31 that whether you eat or, or, or drink or whatever you do do it all for the glory of God so look at what he says he did not only create all things all things were not only created for him but he goes on to say in verse 17 that you know he sustains all things ladies and gentlemen jesus sustains all things all right you know christ continually sustains his creation preventing you know from falling into you know into into chaos or disintegrating look at remember what you know the the, the author of uh, the book of hebrews said uh, christ is the radiance of the uh, of the glory of god and and the exact imprint of uh, of his nature and then he goes on to say that he upholds the universe by the word of his power by the word of his power. Remember, we are talking about, you know, the supremacy of Christ. We are talking about the preeminence of Jesus Christ. And we've already said that Christ made all things. He is the creator. Number two, all things were created for him. Number three, he holds, you know, all things together. He continually sustains, you know, the creation. Now, that was, you know, the first sentence, uh, the first phrase, uh, you know, that Christ is the Lord of creation. Secondly, in verse 18, in verse 18, um, you know, we see this phrase. Let's read verse 18. And he is the head of the body, the church. He is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, that in everything he might be preeminent. See, this is the sentence that I actually have picked up, you know, the, uh, he talks about, you know, Christ being the head of the church. He is the head of the church. What does he mean? He's simply saying that, you know, Christ is the authority. He is the only head, ladies and gentlemen. He is the only Lord of the church, okay? He is the fountainhead of all spiritual life in the body, okay? You know, 
the church belongs to Christ. He is the body. You know, there is an analogy. He uses actually this image talking about, you know, the church as the body of Christ. And Christ is the head. There is nobody, you know, else who is the head of the church. And actually, you know, some people make mistakes trying, you know, to attribute the church to, them, to themselves, saying that, you know, this is my church. No, the, Christ is the owner of the church. Remember what he says in the book of Matthew, I will establish my church. The church is the Lord's. And so if you try not to separate the head from the body, what remains is actually dead. What, what remains has no life. So the life actually, you know, the church gets, you know, its life from Jesus Christ. That's what actually I'm saying, that he, he, Christ is the fountainhead of, you know, uh, uh, the fountainhead of, uh, uh, of, of all spiritual life in, uh, in, in the body. Okay, now if if you have a life today, ladies and gentlemen, it is because um, Christ, you know, gives it to you, gives it to you. You cannot attribute, you cannot give credit to anybody because your life that you have as a believer does not come from anybody else. It comes, you know, from uh, uh, Christ Jesus. If you have life today, it is actually the evidence that uh, the work of the head of the body of Christ is at work, is at work, you know. Uh, in you, the church gets its life, you know, from the head. The church belongs to Christ. So, ladies and gentlemen, always let's depend on Christ. If we want to flourish, if we want, you know, to thrive, we have to depend on Christ Jesus because he is the source of life. He is the source of life, especially, you know, the source of the life of the church. It is in him that we get, you know, try to get, you know, the head of and then the body is dead. The body has the, you know, does not function. The body is lifeless. But, you know, we are connected to Christ. We have been united to Christ. And the life that we have, you know, we get it, you know, from, from Christ Jesus. It is our, you know, Paul is calling us to continually depend on Christ. The moment, you know, we separate ourselves from him, we are off. We are dead. We, we will have no life. So let's continue to depend daily, daily you know, on Christ. Okay, still in verse, you know, 18, Paul goes on to say that Christ is the firstborn from the dead. And what is, you know, Paul pointing to? Paul is pointing to the resurrection of Christ. And, and what he's saying is that, you know, you know, Christ, Christ's resurrection is the ground of our hope. He is the firstborn of the dead. That's what we're reading in this passage, in, in this passage okay? And so his resurrection is uh, the ground of our uh, our hope okay since he raised from the dead we have also hope that one day one day we will also raise okay that is where lies our hope it lies in the resurrection of jesus christ in fact remember in first corinthians chapter 15 verse 17, verse 17 paul says that if christ has not you know been raised our faith is worthless he it is worthless and actually we are still in our sins so our Hope lies in the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Okay? Then thirdly, uh, look with me at this phrase in verse 19. Verse 19, for in him all fullness of God was pleased to dwell. In him all fullness of God was pleased, you know, to dwell. Look at this, ladies and gentlemen. Um, in this actually a sentence, we see the fullness and what the scripture is saying that, you know, the fullness, in Christ there is a fullness. And what Paul is arguing is that, you know, because Christ is supreme in creation, because Christ is, you know, supreme in redemption, right? Therefore, he is sufficient. He is everything that you and I need. Because in him there is, there is fullness. In him there is fullness. So you don't look somewhere else, you know, other than Christ for fullness. You look in Christ for fullness. And remember, that's actually what, you know, the first teachers were telling believers. That what you believe about Christ, about Christ is fine. But if you really want to grow in the Christian faith, you have, you know, to augment him. You have to supplement his redemptive work. In other words, they were telling people that, you know, Christ's redemptive work is not enough. It's not sufficient. But Paul is saying, ladies and gentlemen, that in him, there is fullness. In him there is fullness. And then when the Bible says that in Christ there is a fullness, why do we go outside of Christ you know, to find something that will give us you know, fullness? That is totally, you know, unsound, right? 
in him there is a fullness. Do you want to draw, do you want to get something else, you know, outside of Christ when the Bible says that in him there is fullness? Don't go anywhere else. Find fullness in Christ Jesus. Okay? Then the phrase number four, which is actually the final. And, you know, look at it uh, in verse, you know, 20. Verse 20. Let's read verse 20. And through him, and through him, you know, to reconcile to himself all things, whether on earth or in heaven, making peace by the blood of his cross. And what is the major point that you see in this verse 20? Actually, what I see uh, personally is that in this, in this verse, you know, 20, Paul stresses that Christ is the reconciler. All right? He is the reconciler. That's what he says. And through him to reconcile to himself all things. Christ is uh, the reconciler. The reconcil- Not only does he stress, you know, the supremacy of Christ in, cre- in creation. Not only does he stress the supremacy of Christ in, you know, uh, in, in, in redemption. Not only does he stress the supremacy of Christ in his person, but he also stresses, you know, the, you know, the sufficiency of Christ in, uh, in his work. His redemptive work is sufficient. Is sufficient. He is the reconciler. Uh, through him, God reconciled all things, you know, to himself, having made peace, as we've read actually here, having made peace, you know, through the blood of, uh, of his cross. He is the reconciler. He's the one who brought us to God. It is through him that we are united, you know, with, with God. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, you know, did you know that all of us, human beings, were estranged from God? As the scripture says that we all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. We were estranged, you know, from God. And you know what we deserved? We deserved the judgment of God. We deserved, you know, to die. We deserved, you know, to spend eternity apart from God. But look at, you know, this very good news that we're actually reading in this passage, right? But you know, the atonement, the atoning death of Christ, you know, by, you know, through, through the atoning death of Christ, the wrath of God was quitted. It was quitted for all his people. And as we embrace Christ, you know, by faith, as we repent of our sins, as we turn, you know, to him, we find in him uh, the blessings of all the benefits of the reconciliation with, with God. God has done, you know, something very, very wonderful that nobody else would do it, you know, to you. He has reconciled, Christ has reconciled us to God. To God. You know, he took away the penalty. He delivered us, you know, from the penalty of sins. He delivered us, you know, from the powers of sin. He has brought us, you know, into his kingdom. And now, and now, you know, he, we have everything, everything that we need in him. Friends, uh, let me ask you this. Have you embraced Christ? Have you embraced Christ, you know, um, have you realized that if you are apart from Christ, actually, uh, you are an enemy of God. You are at an enemy at enmity with God. Have you realized that you know there is no way that you can be you know indifferent, all right, uh, to God? You are either for Him, or you are either against Him. You can't be both. You can't be both. You are either for Him or against Him. Okay, you are either His or you not His, all right. And the solution has been found in Christ Jesus, right? If you are not in Christ Jesus, then you are God's enemy. And the wrath of God is upon you. The penalty of sin is upon you. So, as you hear this message today, this very morning, why don't you run to Jesus Christ? Run to him as you profess your faith in him, as you trust in him, as you know you repent of your sins, as you trust in Christ, as you rely on him, his, redemptive, his sufficient redemptive work. Run to him. So that you also, you know, you can also become, you know, part of, uh, part of uh, his uh, family. Let me talk a little bit about, you know, those maybe who are in Christ. So you may be in Christ, but you're still struggling, you know, to see his sufficient redemptive work. Have you realized, you know, how much the Lord has done for you? Did you know that, you know, all his fullness... All the fullness is in Christ Jesus. He is sufficient. Don't allow anybody you know, to trick you. 
straight, allow anybody not to lie to you that you need something else outside of, of Christ. Okay? There is no need, ladies and gentlemen, to go any place else. Okay? He is the creator. He is the redeemer. He is the reconciler. He is. In him there is a fullness. He is everything I and you need. Don't go outside of Christ. In order for you to be saved, you need Christ. You need to look to Christ alone. In order for you to grow in grace, to live a godly life, you need to look to Jesus. Because he is everything that you need for your salvation. He is everything that you need. Let's uh, go before the Lord and pray uh, that you know the Lord will use this truth to change us, to transform us, so that uh, we may stand in our identity and live that very purpose as to why God has made us, and especially in Christ Jesus. Lord, we continue uh, to pray, and we commit ourselves into your hands today. Lord, we ask you to help us understand who your son really is. Help us to see uh, him in all his glory, and help us to embrace him and live for him. If there are those, Lord, who are here and uh, who may be listening to, who have been listening to our study, uh, maybe they haven't come in or, uh, to embrace Christ. Lord, I pray that you'll help them. You'll reveal yourself to them through your son, Jesus Christ, by the word and by the spirit. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen.